community still calling various leaders uh, to deal with what I think is an unattended crisis. Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, I represent the 18th Congressional District. Uh, this past Sunday, the um, 8th of August, I was at the Lyndon Baines Johnson Hospital. Preceding that, uh, the story came out of the little baby, 11 months old, in my congressional district, who had to be airlifted uh, to Temple, who was infected with COVID-19, uh, and it was uh, the Delta variant. Uh, more children obviously getting sick. So I knew at that time that we had a problem with nursing and as well as beds. Uh, I went to the hospital on Sunday and toured the hospital and saw the conditions uh, that created an internal disaster where patients were in the hallways attended to but needing additional nurses and additional beds. This is throughout the Harris County region. Uh, just recently, uh, one of the medical centers, hospitals not in the medical center, had to close uh, their emergency room. I'm saying all this to say uh, that Today, I want to ask the question why we are letting Governor Greg Abbott off the hook for the inadequate response that he has now given to this region. And so I have asked and sent a letter uh, to President Biden uh, today. I want federal intervention. I want federal intervention based upon the high numbers of COVID-19 in my congressional district specifically, but in Harris County uh, extensively. Uh, the public health system needs more nurses. They're opening up a mass unit. Uh, the private hospital system, as I indicated, are closing emergency rooms. Uh, and the question of individuals having to wait 11 and 20 hours for medical care. No fault of these hospitals. These first responders, these nurses are working beyond the call of duty. They are exhausted because there has not been a sizable break from the time of February 2020 to this time. And today it was reported that 40% of the cases of COVID-19 Delta are between Florida and Texas, Florida and Texas. It is important to note that articles reporting that there is help on the way from the state is absolutely wrong. The state, the governor, has not called the federal government, as has occurred with Louisiana, Arizona, Arkansas, as examples. Arkansas and Arizona have Republican governors, and they have asked for federal help. I'll report as to what federal help they have received, but I want to emphasize what this letter said. Uh, President Biden uh, and his administration have been stupendous. As a senior member of Homeland Security, and I congratulate him on that leadership, and the chair of the Bipartisan Congressional Coronavirus Task Force, I write to request your intervention in the state of Texas to allow for direct federal assistance to counties and local governments in need of medical staff and additional capacity to treat critically ill patients. I'm aware of the emergency provision of nurses to Louisiana, Mississippi, and Arizona from the federal government in response to the crisis. Is there authority in your office that would allow the federal government to respond directly to requests from county public health departments or hospitals in need of assistance during the public health emergency. Your assistance is also needed to stem the tide of infections by implementing mass mandates in the current crisis uh, unfolding in Texas and nationally. However, Texas and Florida represent 40 percent and also 40 percent of the problem. I'm also asking for the recalcitrant actions of the governor uh, to uh, stop, cease and desist and asking the President to intervene in the Executive Order GA38, which combines several existing COVID-19 existing offices, orders by his office, that banned local governments, including school districts, 
from instituting mask mandates. I also ask that the Secretary of Education establish a mask mandate or an optional for all public K-12 education settings that qualify to receive COVID-19 emergency funding. These schools or school districts that have not received funding from the state should have the discretion to return to remote learning until the preparation as outlined by the CDC for occupancy has been met. Finally, Governor Abbott has not yet released the funding provided by the CARES Act that is allocated to schools, both public and private, to prepare to receive students and teachers back into the classroom. Because of the Delta variant's impact of COVID-19 on children, the federal government must act to protect those in K-12. So I am uh, indicating that there is a crisis uh, and that crisis has to be remedied. The governor sent out, after my press conference or my statement, the governor sent out uh, a catch as catch can, meaning he gave permission for the various hospitals under stress to be able to contract with private nurses, to call states to be able to get nurses. Let me tell you, if you're, if you're seeing patients, if your whole hospital is focused on the patients in the hospital, I can assure you that you don't have time to engage in getting contract nurses. Secondarily, I have spoken uh, to our public hospital system. Right now, they have made a request through this contract nursing system, and they today don't know what they might get. Who is going to give them uh, any nurses at all? So I am stunned that we would have articles that says Texas Governor Abbott seeks out-of-state help against COVID-19. That is ludicrous. He needs to do like the governors of Louisiana, Arkansas, and, and uh, Arizona. He needs to ask the federal government, who I spoke to, the COVID-19 team, the head of the team, Jeff Zentz, who says they are ready to help Texas, but Texas has not made any phone calls to them at all. None. And the only thing the governor is offering is contract nurses on the private sector. He's saying, I'm going to stand up antibody uh, various sites so you can get some antibodies. Who knows how many people can access that? What he needs to be pushing is that everyone gets vaccinated. He needs to be pushing the acceptance of mass mandates in schools. He needs to be pushing that he is seeking the help from the President of the United States and the COVID-19 team. Why has he not done that? We now have examples from West Palm Beach in Florida, close to 400 students quarantined, 51 are infected, and out of that came 400 quarantined. In the order that the governor has sent through TEA, he doesn't allow contact tracing. He doesn't allow you to tell the other parents that there is an infected student. And between his attorney general and himself, he's suing Dallas. I'd venture to say that he will be suing the counties that are here, from Fort Bend to Harris County, uh, if they do this, and HISD if they do this, meaning if they issue that mandate, of which I support for their students in order to save lives. So I'm here today to chronicle why we are in the predicament that we're in and why the questions have not been raised to this governor. Uh, to be able to assure uh, that we get help. You cannot do this alone. We cannot do this with private hospitals. We can only do this with the help of the federal government that has what we call crisis nurses. That is what has gone to Louisiana, that's what's gone to Arizona, and that's what's gone uh, to um, Arkansas. Let me be very clear. Nurses don't have to travel. They are wonderfully dedicated professionals. But there's a spike across America. Where are you going to get the nurses from? What are you, how are you going to place them? With the federal government, they immediately put in these teams, uh, as well as, I'm looking for, uh, as well as uh, the uh, urgency of getting them. And they are professional teams. They're military teams. That's what we need to have. Uh, and, and that's why I wanted to come here today to indicate that this letter has gone out, 
but there are other voices that need to be raised. The federal government needs to come into Texas. And the example needs to be of the other states with Republican governors who have put aside politics, not politicized COVID-19, concerned about those who are dying and those who are infected, and concerned about the heavy emphasis on impoverished and minority communities, Latinx, Hispanic communities, and African American. They are in the ICUs today. ICU beds barely exist, barely exist, and will continue to deplete, continue not to have enough beds, continue to have people waiting in line, continue to have to put up mass units, but you need the nurses. Let me say that I'm very glad to announce that Lone Star College that's participating in my nursing partnership will be providing nurses to Harris Health uh, and UMC. They're working on that as we speak. Student nurses who can only be in certain positions, but thank goodness for them. I thought any help would be helpful to them. So I just want to share some stark numbers uh, and then I'll take questions. First of all, let's know how serious this is. 117 countries is where COVID-19, the Delta is, meaning the Delta is very infectious. It is now in 117 countries. This is important. People who are not getting vaccinated in the breakthrough issue. At least five vaccines have some proof of protection against the SARS-CoV-2 Delta. So those are the ones that are circulating in this community. Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson Johnson. We don't have AstraZeneca or Barrett Biotech. But the three vaccines that we use, lab studies, clinical effectiveness. So whatever our constituents or our neighbors have gotten, it can or will get, it will be sufficient against the Delta variant. The numbers are improving, but from my perspective, they're not improving enough. Let me share something else with you. Fourteen days, and uh, you've seen these numbers, but, but this is the darkest one. That's the spike. We are at the top. Change of new cases. Texas is at the top. It should be known that it's spiking across America. So how are you going to get nurses in the normal private sector way, contract nurses? How are you going to get them? That's the question that needs to be asked. Do you have a pool of nurses somewhere that can be utilized that are not in other states? And we're the two hot spots here. That's dark, if you can see it. That's number one. That's the spike. Uh, and that's in the last two weeks. Here we are again. New cases over the past 72 hours. Florida is 81,000. Texas is 40,000 over the last 72 hours, three days. And you know where a great amount of them is? In Houston, Harris County. In Houston, sorry. In Houston, Harris County. Sorry, I'm doing show and tell. In Houston, Harris County. 81 in Florida, reckless behavior, and 40,000 here equally reckless behavior. I don't understand how you're going to file lawsuits against counties and school districts who are simply trying to save lives. I don't understand why you cannot provide a waiver to your executive order so that these institutions are not penalized and having to pay fines. And I don't understand how anyone thinks that anything has been done by this governor other than to play politics with voting rights. I think you've seen the spike. Here's the other problem. We only have 50% of Americans who are doubly vaccinated. That's not a lot. It's less, 50% is not. There are about 14 million Texans that are not vaccinated, nine to 14 million. And they're everywhere, nine to 14 million. And then we have this number uh, that, that reflects uh, how many are vaccinated in the United States. 
Okay. This is about breakthrough. That means if you've gotten the vaccine. You can see that the bulk of what will happen to you if you're vaccinated is 96%. And everyone should understand, if you've got a lot of people walking around not vaccinated with the Delta variant, but you are vaccinated, maybe, it will, maybe you might get a taste of it. I don't want to use that terminology. Maybe you might get an aspect of the variant. But you've got a vaccine, you're going to be 96% versus even you can't even see it versus death. No vaccine, you're in the ICU. And how do I know it? Because I'm talking to our hospitals and doctors who are saying this is where we are. So, final word to you is we live in Harris County and our local officials have said that we're at the severe threat level. This is like the hurricane. We're at the top level of a Hurricane 5. And the children will be going back to school this week, next week, and HISD starts back on the 23rd. Mixed, unvaccinated, no mask wearing persons in that combination. So I am asking the President of the United States to help me. And let me broaden that terminology to help our community, to help our state. I have spoken to the governors. I have reached out to the governor's chief of staff because I really didn't think that this was a partisan question. I have reached out to other leaders and I must say there are persons uh, within his own realm who are concerned, but they have to live with Governor Greg Abbott. And that is the challenge that we have to face. Uh, I will give to you because I just saw it. Just want to make sure that I share this with you. And I know this will be edited, so but let me uh, let me share with you. Okay, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Arizona, they deployed uh, nursing emergencies. Some have deployed paramedics. Some have been deployed paramedics. Some have been deployed emergency equipment. So when you ask the federal government, they've got a, an inventory that is beyond our imagination. They have access to a nursing inventory that is beyond our imagination. They have access to the military. And they deploy these people on the ground. And they get deployed quickly. And you're not sitting around trying to sign contracts, trying to get nurses in the private sector. Does anyone understand the distinction? That's why this letter has gone out. I want to thank the President of the United States who uh, was, had his COVID-19 team make a presentation today. Um, I want to thank him for his work with Louisiana, Mississippi, Arizona, Arkansas. Those are Republican governors except for Louisiana. Louisiana is a Democratic governor. These governors have reached out and they're hot spots. Why in the world can we not uh, get these folk here? Uh, let me give this last number, it's 132,000 new cases, 113 uh, new cases per day, 24% increase, 9,700 hospital uh, admissions, 31% increase. This is in the last week, 452 per day, 22% increase. Does anyone think that we're not in a crisis? 90% of these counties or the counties have, there are certain counties that have high, high transmission and that's what we have. So I do want to finalize my remarks by saying I thought it was imperative to see, send this letter. I thought the numbers were stark. I don't want to see our state, our county, our cities miss on federal aid that is just standing there waiting for you. And let me repeat again, I just talked to the FEMA administrator, which is why I was delayed. I don't want to have that in there that she delayed me. But in any event, FEMA has said Today is August the 12th. FEMA has said the only request, and say it over and over again, that they have received from Texas, five mortuary trailers. That's updated as today. The only request that we have gotten from the state of Texas is to get the dead bodies away. We haven't received any to get the nurses, to get emergency equipment. The only request 
as of August 12, 2021, is mortuary trailers. I almost feel like breaking down. I almost feel. But that's all you're going to do for the people of Texas. I cannot tolerate letting the governor get away focusing on arresting people while people are dying and the state and the people of this state don't know that the only caring effort that he has about you, you, the Texas, a Houstonian, a person in Harris County, is he wants to get the mortuary truck to move your bodies out. That's the only thing he cares about. This is not a fight between Sheila Jackson Lee, Congresswoman Jackson Lee, and Governor Abbott. It is not. I have called. I have reached out. I've called persons who know the governor. I hope that he will see others who have been uh, part of his Republican Governor's Conference. I hope he would call the governor of Arkansas, the governor of Mississippi, the governor of Arizona the governor of Louisiana. I wish he'd call them because they could explain why they made that decision. And I can't explain why this governor only wants to focus from FEMA, the federal government, a resource to get the dead bodies quietly out of the state. Nobody even knows. He's not even announced that that's what they've asked FEMA for and no one knows where they're going to be dispatched to. But they're on hold because that is a request our state made. I'll take questions at this time. Thank them for that. There are more resources if he would ask the federal government that would be able to help them not work 18 hours. I'm not going to let the governor get away with the fact that the private sector has been able to push 18-hour nurses or nurses who are doing 18 hours. I have applauded nurses. I'm applauding nursing students. But at the same time, the one thing about the federal government is that when they come in to help, the help is there and it keeps coming and coming. And that's what I want to make sure. When the hours of eight, when 18 hours has exhausted every nurse that has come through a contract, then what do we have to fall back on? We're not going to finish this week. We're not going to finish next week. And so why not partner with the private sector? and the federal response. They're there to help. Otherwise, I could say, well, um, they got private mortuaries too. Isn't that great? But he asked the federal government for mortuary trailers. Isn't that something that should cause us to scratch our heads? So if he can ask them for mortuary trailers, well, let's supplement the private sector and have federal crisis nursing that could come as well. That's the point that I'm making. We are better together as partners because this is a federal issue to help the states. And there are circumstances where um, it is a difficult burden for uh, the uh, public sector, for example, public ho hospital sector. They make the request to the state, they gotta wait on the state getting them. It's much better when you have these nurses on the ground ready to be deployed. It's a different thing from being deployed as being hired. You are sent there and more are sent there and you have the relationship and you can raise your voice and say you need more and nurses can come in in that way. So I think there's nothing wrong with us doing both because the crisis is so steep.
Um, so a, a two-year-old, excuse me, a pre-K four-year-old and five-year-old, let me put a microphone and say, do you know what personal responsibility is? It is an absurd and insensitive tweet. HISD, among others, I have about seven school districts in my congressional district, and they are varying sizes. HISD is the fourth largest in the district, in, the, in, the, in my congressional district. They have a range of students. They have students with possibly their own underlying conditions, and he is relegating them to a hospital stay in a bed that doesn't exist. It is absurd that you would not allow thoughtful school boards and thoughtful school superintendents from working together. It so happens that the HISD wants to move forward, but they will be in opposition to the government's, the government's position. That means that taxpayer dollars will be wasted by the governor and the attorney general to sue our own children. They'll be suing our children. And frankly, I think that is shameful. And it is sinful that he would do that. So my answer is, um, I can't fathom a statement like that relating to children that go to school and to a parent who wants their child to wear a mask, but they also want the other children to wear a mask as well. They have personal responsibility, but they're not the mascot. The teacher is not the mascot. And the issue, of course, is how do teachers Suppose they want the class to wear the mask and they want to nicely say, class, can you all wear your mask? There's a difference in the child understands that the mask is required and it's required all over the state and there's not this tension that separates parents, separates school districts. That is not what we want to have. I, every manner of bells is going on around here. Ringing bells, siren bells, we appreciate the bells, all the bells uh, that... Um, uh, I, I do want to just um, add this point, that across the nation, the majority of the people that are sick are in these school districts, um, and the majority of them are people of color. And certainly, um, we have a very diverse community, uh, and we will find this as we go into school. It's very diverse. It has, there are sick people of different backgrounds. But certainly if you have a populations that are sicker than others, and they're all in the school district, and we want our children to be educated, that poses a serious problem. I would be here regardless, because I think the government should ask for federal assistance, and not just offer antibody um, sites uh, that uh, I know a person right now that's deceased who did not get any antibodies. Uh, they were told to do it, but they were waiting 11 hours to get in. They just walked away. Unfortunately, they did not last. Uh, so there are a number of circumstances where if we are consistent with federal aid, consistent with being a partner, state and federal government, consistent with working with our school districts, consistent with working with our local public health sectors, wouldn't we be better off? That's my question. And you know I'm gonna be saying this over and over again, I can't help it. I don't know why you are feeling comfortable about mortuary trailers and you don't wanna bring in nurses, in addition to the contract nurses. Ask the question. They're going to get tired because across the nation, nurses are needed. So if we have a federal pool of crisis nurses, why not access that as well? What is wrong with doing that? And I could probably do a poll in my district and find out what hospitals, have you gotten any nurses? Have you gotten any nurses? Thank goodness the medical center is renowned. And they have the ability 
to independently contract. Other systems are waiting on the governor contract nurses to get to them. They haven't gotten there yet. They're making a request. That's happening with most of the public system. You're making a request. Have they gotten there yet? I will know sooner or later, but they weren't there today. So I think that's the difference. That is the frightening difference. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you.